Boom. Shaka Laka. Shaka Laka. All right, let me turn these ringers off because these phones be making noise. Because everybody want to call me. They might want to call you. Who knows? What's going on, Anna? Hey, I appreciate your time and uh, you for just reaching out. Oh, cool, cool. So you, um, you're working on some real estate deals now, huh? Well, I am starting, so I haven't gotten to any yet. I just started, and the information is overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, it can be that way, and I'm guessing that's what you're running into. Like, man, it's so much stuff you can do with this stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. So what is it that you aim to do? What is, what is your main goal? What are you trying to do? Wholesaling or are you trying to buy some houses or what's your, your real goal? So um, wholesale to keep the cash flow and then um, and then um, like I mentioned where you put uh, what is it? <sighs> you trying to buy houses where you stay in the deal or you're just trying to make some quick yeah. flip money or what, what's your plan? Yeah. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay away from renovations. I'm trying to, because it's just uh, costly and um, not really necessary if you find the right deal and if the deal um you can put in work for equity where the tenant fixes it up for you. Um, and then, so I'm trying to find deals where you put the tenant in and like monthly cash flow. Oh, okay. So how long have you been studying this stuff? Are you like brand, brand new? Yeah, for two weeks. Two whole weeks? Oh, well, there you go. At least you hit the ground running. You know, it's, um, it's a lot of information and uh, it seems like... Um, so you, you're, you're trying to figure out what exit strategy or what is it that you really feel like you're, you're stuck with? So I'm stuck on the exit strategies because they all seem like the same. And um, I, I'm not sure which one goes for what kind of situation and how to close. Right, right. So you're more so thinking about what's going to happen next week instead of how do I find me a motivated seller right now and see how I can help them. Is that what it is? Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, you know, uh, the OG Ron calls that being a thinker brain. Say, so don't overthink yeah, it. I know, I know. That's me. <laughs> so I know that's what it is. But, uh, you know, the big thing is find somebody to want to sell their house. You know, what extra strategy you're going to use is really more so about what you can do to help them. Because you don't know if you can wholesale the deal. You don't know if you can uh, put a tenant buyer in there on a work for equity program or do a lease option or do any of these other creative things because you don't know what they're going to give you. So that's what I would say to focus more of your energy on getting to a seller, asking good questions and seeing how you can actually help them. Because if you're thinking about, Oh, I'm going to do all this stuff, but you don't know what their situation is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's a lot of things you can do once you're actually talking to a seller. So my first position all the time is ask questions when I get on the phone with them, or even if I go meet them in person, I'm talking to them, asking them, you know, what's the best case scenario for you, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller? What do you think is the best option? What do you feel like will be the best case scenario for you when everything is done and the smoke is cleared? What do you, what is your goal? Because then you can see how you can help them. Because if you're going into the deal like, oh, I'm thinking about how I'm going to make all this money or how I'm going to flip this and flip that, it makes it kind of harder. You see what I'm saying? Versus mm -hmm. asking them how you can help them. Because they might say, I just want to get rid of this house. I don't want no money. Or I just want this. Or I just want the, the loan paid off. Everybody wants something. But until you ask that question of the seller, you don't know what you're going to do with it yet because you don't know what their problem is. You got to identify why they're selling. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because everybody got different needs. They may want to just not make the payment every month. Debt relief. That's how we come across a lot of these uh, subject to and wraparound mortgages and all this other stuff because those people just want, don't want to make the payment for whatever reason. Then some people are like, no, I need the loan out of my name. I need all cash right now. That's what everybody wants. But everybody probably can't get that. But until you mm -hmm. ask the questions and see exactly how you can help them, trying to figure out what extra strategy don't mean anything because we don't know what their situation is yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
And um, what you said about, um, so I find a lot in working in Hawaii. Um, so you I in Hawaii? Across, yeah. Oh, okay. You living in paradise. Oh, I'm jealous. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, here I find that the market is like strange compared to like other people working real estate in other markets, how they describe their situation. Um, a lot of the times uh, I'm working with agents and they like only want all cash or loans. Um, and there's no like communication with the seller. It's just straight up, just like cash or loan. Exactly, because you're going through a middleman, a real estate agent or somebody else, some third party. So you're gonna have a lot of difficulty and pushback on all of this creative stuff when you're dealing through that. You have to be in contact directly with sellers. What type of marketing are you doing to speak to, directly to a homeowner? I'm posting uh, my ad on Craigslist and um, Facebook. And yep. I posted around town. Okay. So have people been calling you or anything like that to ask you, you know, to say they want to sell the house? Very little, like two or three calls. Oh, well, you got more than most. Some get this many. Goose egg. So I would say turn that up. You got to do some more things. And I don't know if you've been on the website, wokerealestate.com. I have a whole list of different ways that I use every day to market, to find motivated sellers or just sellers. They don't even have to really be that motivated. Just need somebody who wants to sell their house and you could probably help them out just depending on their situation. So, but when you're going through a real estate agent and all that, yeah, you're going to need a loan or yeah, you're going to need, you know, proof of funds and all this other stuff, you know, go through and, you know, run your credit report and all of that stuff. That's what they do. That's the conventional side. You got to get to the unconventional side. If you think you're going to do these creative deals, meaning you're going to buy a house directly from a seller, let them finance you doing subject twos and wraparounds and all this other creative stuff. That's the only way this stuff works. You're not going to be able to do it necessarily through an agent. You can, but starting out, I wouldn't suggest anybody doing that because you need to know what you're talking about when you're dealing with the agent. Because they, yeah. they know everything. So you yeah. don't want to be in there trying to battle with them. That's true. So the biggest thing I would say is uh, get, get your marketing up to where you're actually speaking to sellers and not even just sellers, motivated sellers will be better because they're going to be more um, open to your creative ways. Like, oh, let's see how we can help you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why when you run into a wall, when you go talk to an agent, they're going to say, well, look, this is what's on the MLS or the multiple listing service. These are the houses. And you're looking like this is full retail and they want all cash and they want it all fast. That's what you're going to go across. So you're looking yeah. for a small, minor group of people who don't, who are basically looking for somebody like you who can solve their problem. Now, um, to address what you were just saying about in Hawaii, that it's a different market. Is that what you were saying? It's something different there, right? Yeah. So let me ask you this. Do people die there? Yes. Do people get divorced there? Yes. Do they get diseases and get sick there? Mm -hmm. Do people fall on hard times and lose their job there? Yep. So there's no different in that market than any other market. Those people and life happens every day. You have to come mm -hmm. in and help solve a problem for them. So, you know, to think that it's, this market is hard or whatever, you know, it can be, but in reality it's not. If you got enough marketing out there and you got sellers coming your way. Yeah. So, um, I also have a lead service that sends me uh, for sell by owners, but I noticed that the for sell by owners, um, they're all like they, are all um, investors. They already like bought the house, renovated it and flipped it brand new and they're selling it full retail price. Like I can't do anything with that, can I? Like, so, so is it just price is the problem? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're selling well over actual retail value. Well, I mean, that can be a problem but it doesn't have to be a problem. It's really all about terms. Are they willing to accept terms? Meaning you make a payment to them every month or something creative like that. Uh, okay. That's yeah. the real thing. The price that really doesn't kill a deal per se when you're dealing in terms. You can pay full price for a house. In fact, that's what my bandit signs say. I don't have any of them to say, uh, we buy houses. Mine say full price for your house and a phone number. And they're like, oh, you can pay full price for sell your house for full price. That's what the uh, bandit signs say. And they call it. And they're like, I heard you can buy my house for full price. And they want more information. And that's when we hit them with all the other stuff we got ready to you know, ask them some questions and try to see if they're willing to take terms on it or take payments on it. So without that, then yeah, you know, that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. 
either going to pay cash to those investors or if they agree to let you make a monthly payment to them, even if you have to put money down, I mean, it may be worth it. It just depends, you know. So you really mm -hmm. need to get your marketing turned up some more. But for sale by owners is a good source because, you know, they actively do want to sell. It's not a question of do you want to sell. It's about how can I help you sell it? Basically, we want to buy it. So it's a little bit different on it versus just cold calling people like, oh, yeah, I don't know if you want to sell it. I was in the neighborhood and uh, you think you want to sell your house. That's a little different than somebody actually marketing and looking for somebody to buy their house. It should mm -hmm. be a, a warmer opening for you. True, true. So, so when you've spoken to these people, uh, the for sale by owners, what kind of feedback were they giving you? Yeah, so when I was speaking to them, I originally thought that I had to get like a very, very discounted price. And so their feedback was pretty negative because they want they weren't interested and um, wanted to sell full retail. And I didn't know how to present the terms. Right, right. That's what you need to do some study, I think, really, because you need to know the actual magic words to say to get that stuff across yeah. so that you can uh, basically um, ask that question, because the question has to be asked. Would you consider taking your equity in monthly installments or something creative like that? You have to ask it in a way that they can either say yes or no. And if they say yes, we're good. If they say no, you can follow up with would you take it? Uh, would you consider doing a lease option? or a lease purchase where we will release it from you, relieve you for the responsibility of the maintenance and repairs of the house. And, uh, you know, we basically will be basically buying your house and they will, you know, tell you yes or no. If they don't take terms in any kind of way or they're going to want all cash and you just move on down the street. You're going to have to move on. You know, most people are going to say no, I'll tell you that right out the gate. But there are a few that say yes. So, you know, when you start beating them up on price, that's more like a wholesale deal. You want to beat them down. It's a hundred thousand dollar house or it's worth that the ARV or after repair value is a hundred thousand dollars. You got to buy it at 40 or $50,000 or you can't even play it as far as a wholesale deal. But as far as terms, yes, you can buy it for the full price that they're asking probably just depending on the terms, which are little or no money down and a low monthly payment. That's sweetheart terms. That's what we're looking for. That's the way you find these deals to basically stay in a deal where you can put a tenant buyer in and do all these other creative exit strategies. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Did you uh, have any specific questions that you had wrote down or anything for me? Um, that was generally like the questions, just basically reorganizing those thoughts in my head. Yeah, because that's the thing. You got to, you know, you got to find somebody to want to sell first and ask them the right questions. Until you ask them the right questions, you don't know how you can help them. And mm -hmm. so that's why uh, I put out a whole sheet. Here's one here with 50 questions on it that you can ask a seller before you even think about making an offer. It's just an initial uh, contact. I ask sellers before I even think about trying to offer them terms or offer them cash or offer them whatever I'm going to offer them. In fact, the way I do it is a multiple offer strategy, but that's a little more advanced. But what I would suggest is doing the first step is getting them on the phone, which means you're going to have to turn your marketing up and asking them the right questions to actually know how you can help them. Why are you selling? Uh, what are you going to do if you're not able to sell? Have you thought about listing this house with a real estate agent? So I ask those basic type of questions and a whole bunch more before I even think about throwing a number out of my mouth to ask a question or to actually offer them some money or some lowball offer, have them hanging up on me or whatever. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so your, your main goal is to, uh, are you looking to wholesale deals or what? Yeah, I started wholesaling and then, well, so as I started doing more research into this business it started off with wholesaling and so I learned more about wholesaling first and then it went into the more creative strategies and I was able to wholesale one deal it's in the process right now but then um that was the one deal that fell into my lap when I first started and then um afterwards like now I'm just con continuing looking for more deals so how did you find that first deal that you uh, have on the contract now through Craigslist, it just fell in my lap. The guy called me and looked closed real fast. So you got it under contract with the seller and you went and found a buyer? Yeah. How hard was that? What did you do to find the buyer? Um, I just reposted it on Facebook groups, on Craigslist, and then the buyer called me like in a week. So it was quick, huh? Yeah, it was quick. So you already got him, uh, he signed his paperwork and everything. So it's with the title company. You have title companies or attorneys there? Title, yeah, it's open in escrow right now. 
Oh, okay. How much you gonna make on that? Six K. Six thousand dollars on your first deal. Congratulations. Was Thank it hard you. or what? No, it was really easy. I'm comfortable with wholesaling. Just the pro the finding the really motivated sellers is the the part that you know is hard. Right, right. But you found one on one found you on Craigslist from a free posting. How'd you get a a whole six thousand dollars from a free ad? And people think this hard to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you were like, "Wow, it just fell in my lap." So now you're gonna post them more and more often, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, with this um, with this six thousand, um, I'm going to um, delegate to VAs. So that they can like do the calling because it wastes a lot of my time where I could just, you know, delegate to VA. So so that's what I want to do so that I can get more leads coming in. Right, right. So then you'll be doing nothing but closing calls at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how mine is set up right now. And so that's that's where the bread and butter is, the closing call. You got to get on the phone and, you know, close them on a the deal, basically. So um, as far as that. The wholesale deal you deal did was that uh, like a virtual deal, or you went and met the seller and stuff, or how'd you do that? I could have done it virtually, but I went and met the seller because it was my first deal, so I, I just kind of wanted to fill it out. So I went and met the seller. Oh, okay. And so, how did that work? What was how did that deal work out all together? Was it like he just wanted to get rid of it, or was he like what what, what was his motivation? Why did he want to sell it? Yeah, he just wanted to get rid of it because he was sick and he needed to go back to the mainland to live with his sister. So he was just really trying to get rid of it really fast. And he just came across your ad and said, oh, I'll just sell it to you for dirt cheap. Yeah, exactly. Okay, see, look at that. And see, so so it can't be too much harder to get another type of deal, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it should be about the same, I would think. So um, did you have any other questions or anything for me for now? No, that's all. Thank this you so much. This is to pick my brain. Come on with it. You sure you ain't got nothing else? Pick, pick, pick. <laughs> well, I probably, I probably do, but I feel like I need to um, do, as you said, like market more and then also do more research. I, I do have questions about the loan on how to uh, do that whole process where... Um, uh, you know the loans to take over for subject two and so yeah. you look so you're still trying to figure out how to take over somebody's debt yeah 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 are you going to assume the loan i feel like um like ron recommended to not assume it okay i just want to make sure that's why i asked that question now let's say okay. are you thinking about assuming a loan no 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 we don't assume loans we don't put debt in our name no, no. Yep. <laughs> All right. So you've been studying. Okay. So that's what yeah. I was saying. Hit, hit some more study and uh, be sure to, you know, and, and check it out. You know, you got to always ask those questions, how much they owe on a loan and things like that. Um, the way I do it, as far as finding that information out, if I'm talking to a seller, say I'm the first one they talk to or whatever, I would ask them, um, since we're going to be buying this house for cash, is there a mortgage we're going to be paying off? And they're going to say, yeah, there's a mortgage. About how much is that? Then they're going to say, oh, it's 800 a month or 800 or 80,000 or whatever number they say. And I'm going to ask them, how much is that a month? And they're going to tell me. And then I'm going to ask them, does that include the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, the P-I-T-I? -I? And they're going to say yes or no or whatever, let you know. And then uh, there you go. You know, you got to gather that information. So that's that's so yeah. important, though. You know what I mean? Before you even think about trying to spit these deals out, get somebody in your pipeline and say, yeah, they want to sell. These are the numbers. This is the information. This is the condition of the house. Now let's see how I can help them. And then that'll be a better, stronger position for you versus going in like, I just want to take over somebody's loan. It may not be a deal. You know what I mean? I don't want to take over no loan or no debts or any of that stuff. Either way, I want to know what the deal is before you know, because some people might just give you the house. You know that, right? Yeah, I think that's my problem is asking the right questions because I did ask a couple of people um, like about their mortgage, but I think I asked it wrong and they came at, it came off like, oh, why do you want to know information about my mortgage? Like, I'm not going to disclose that information. Yeah, some people do push back on that. And then, you know, it just depends. There is a way to get around that as well. But, uh, you know, if they do that, you're going to have to get around it because you got to get that information if you think you're going to buy a turn. 
Now, if you're going to do it on a cash wholesale deal or whatever, then it don't matter. You know what I mean? I mean, it matters, but it don't matter. Because yeah. they're going to either, you know, if the numbers work, the numbers work as far as a wholesale is concerned. So that's mm -hmm. that's what I would say on that. But you do want to get that information if possible. Um, let me see if we got any questions over here on the woke real estate investors group. Let's see here. RJ Bates is her buyer. Do you know RJ Bates? I guess he's in Hawaii. No, RJ. I think he's in Hawaii or something. Is that what you're saying on here, Chris? Somebody say that in the comments here. Let's see here. Um, she's going to kill it. Girl, you got this. They telling you, you got this. <laughs> no, that's, I know, because I'm, this is just like the uncomfortable part, the learning process. And then once you get it, then it's like you're moving, rolling the ball. So I'm, this is just the uncomfortable part. Yeah. And I mean, you're doing good already. You say you only been doing it two weeks? Yeah. Or you only been doing the turns, or looking at the turns part two weeks? Um, so I've been looking at the terms part for two weeks and also wholesale. When did you start wholesaling then? Two, yeah, it's been two weeks. Oh, okay. So dang, you hit the ground running. All these people be waiting two years to get a deal and you do it in two weeks. And you say that's really? a bad market in Hawaii. I'm about to come to Hawaii. I'm about to get on me a boat and fly something <laughs> over there or something. Somebody it's a bad market. You over there locking up deals in two weeks. <laughs> Maybe I just got lucky the first time. No, it ain't luck. It's just how the game go. When you get that marketing out, you see that it works. I mean, you ramp it up and you get some other channels of marketing too to bring and attract motivated sellers. And that means money just fall in your lap. Yeah. So it's not a fluke. It just happened because you were marketing for people. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess if you don't have any other questions here, let's see here. Nope. Did, did you have any other questions for me? Um, that's all for now. I just got to do my research and like uh, gather some questions to call. So yeah, you can gather some questions. And like I said, if you go to wokerealestate.com, I have my whole wholesaling package that has all the questions on it that I ask every seller. Uh, it has all the purchase and sales agreement, the assignment agreement, that's for wholesaling. And then I also have some other stuff as well as far as the subject to stuff. And I also have just began a coaching program uh, where I actually help people and we, you know, talk every week and help you through deals and stuff as it goes through. Because, you know, there's some complications to go through, especially when you're doing turns that are more advanced that some people may not be able to handle. And you need somebody to say, hey, yeah, I'm stuck right here. I got this thing this close, but I'm stuck at this little hump. It's easy to just make a phone call or something and say, hey, yeah, I'm stuck here. What do I do? And I'm there to help yeah. you out on a deal like that. So, you know, that kind of helps people out. I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that'll work, Miss Hannah. Thank you. You have a good day. You too. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. If you're watching on the Facebook group, make sure you give it a good thumbs up. Follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. And uh, do what you do, be who you be, and I'll see you before you see me.